Welcome back to Pickles and Ammo. Today we're going to build something that I've wanted to do for a long time, which is a portable, solar-powered apartment battery bank. So what that is, is a backup power supply for the apartment that is renewable, charged by the sun in this case. It's also portable, so when we move we can take it with us without any big hassle. Uh, it's expandable, so we can add panels and batteries as needed uh, as our needs grow. And as an added bonus, we're going to use it not only as an emergency backup, but as a daily power supply to power, in this case, our bedroom stereo. We're going to use all new components, and we're going to do it for under $500. With that, let's take a look at our components. The very first thing we're going to look at is the heart of our system, the battery bank. All right, so this is the heart of our system. This is the Xantrax X-Power 1500. Uh, it's basically a battery on wheels with a built-in inverter here, which takes DC power from the battery and turns it into usable AC power for our household appliances. It's also got a car jack, so you can use uh, your car adapters. And here on the back, a couple of terminals, red and black, for jump-starting your car if you want, or adding an additional battery to extend runtime. So this is going to constitute the battery bank of our system. So this handle here pops right off. We're going to tuck it in the corner, and then we're going to connect everything to it. Okay, so let's take a look at our components first. This is our solar panel. This is a global solar 12 watt, 12 volt panel. It's a thin film panel, which means it's really durable. There's a lot of different solar technologies out there. Some are more efficient than others, some are more expensive. These are a little less efficient, but cheaper. And again, for our purposes, being that we might move this stuff around quite a bit, we want durability overall. Also, it has an integrated junction box. This is where the juice comes from the panel itself into the supplied 15-foot cable. So we don't have to mess around with our own cables and supplying all that stuff. Uh, the cable is going to connect to our charge controller. Now, a charge controller is critical if you're going to be charging a battery with a solar panel. What it does is regulate the voltage to the battery so that it gets the correct voltage at different stages of charge to run most efficient. And it'll prevent your battery from getting overcharged, which will damage the thing. So we spent about $250 on the battery. It was worth the extra money for a quality charge controller. Morningstar in this case. Oh, this is a 10 amp controller. Uh, since we have a 1 amp panel, we have plenty of room to expand with this guy. To connect our charge controller to the battery, we're using a generic DC plug, little cigarette lighter plug, with really thick cable. We found this at a local electronics store for about five bucks. The selling point here, again, being the thick cable, which will improve efficiency. I wouldn't recommend cannibalizing one from your little portables. Uh, so yeah, five bucks. We also, at the electronics store, picked up a small digital multimeter. What this thing does is lets us know how much voltage or current is coming through at the various stages of the operation, right? So about 20 bucks at the local electronics store. Very handy item to have in general, so we recommend it. Uh, all we have left is our tools and mounting supplies. We want a block of wood to attach the charge controller to, screws to accomplish that, electrical tape just in case, a multi-tool, you can use a screwdriver, but we will need a wire stripper as well, so multi-tool kind of all-in-one deal. In this case, the Swiss Spirit, which we highly recommend, and a drill. So, with that all laid out, I guess it's about time to do probably the most difficult thing first, which is going to be to mount the charge controller onto the wood. So, let's take this stuff outside. We'll need your drill, your screws, your wood, and your charge controller. And let's put this thing together. Okay, so we are going to mount the charge controller onto a block of wood. Uh, any wood will work. Since we've got hardwood here, I'm actually going to drill some holes into it before doing the uh, wood screws. If you got a, just a piece of pine or whatever, you can probably get away without drilling the holes. Uh, we're also going to drill a couple extra holes in the corner so that we can hang this thing on the wall. Again, the whole system is meant to be portable, so that's kind of one of the purposes behind mounting this thing on the wood. And there we go. So your charge controller mounted on a block of wood. Uh, the next thing we should do, I guess, is the panels. 
So let's get started on that. Uh, actually, you stay here. I'll be right back with the panel. Okay. So we've got our solar panel. Uh, and again, these things, when in direct sunlight, are live current. So you want to be very careful with the, uh, the two wires coming out the back. This is only a 12 watt panel, so it probably won't kill anybody, but you always, always, always want to remember that you're dealing with live electricity. Uh, we can't turn the panel off, we can turn it away from the sun, so that way we're dealing with, there'll still be current, but a little bit less, and it's probably not gonna hurt anybody. I got an old pair of pants here. We don't wanna scratch the surface of the thing, so. Oops. <laughs> Uh, we'll probably end up mounting the panel up here somewhere. For now, we're just going to run the cable into the big window da -da. so that we can get everything hooked up and then we'll put the panel on the wall here in a minute. So actually, let's uh, go inside, finish putting this thing together. We're pretty close. All we have to do is put connect the panel to the charge controller, charge controller to the battery, and then we're good.